Hello, I'm Keith Ford, and welcome to another edition of From the Vault. In 1955, Remington Arms Company placed a pretty serious bet on a new synthetic polymer called Zytel 101. Remington worked with engineers at DuPont Chemical, who was the parent company of Remington, to produce this synthetic. They, Remington was looking to produce a gun that was lighter weight, more cost effective, and easy to produce. And what they came up with was this right here, the Remington Nylon 66. A couple of test pieces were produced and they ran those guns multiple hundreds of thousands of rounds. And then after that test, they decided to start putting it in production. 1958, the Nylon 66 hit the market and stayed in production from 1958 to 1989. Now the Nylon 66, this one right here is a 1959, actually May of 59 production. This is one of the earliest guns. Of uh, Everything is synthetic except for the barrel, the receiver cover, the bolt, your magazine tube, and some of the internals. This thing is super lightweight. They were resistant to pretty much anything. I mean, weather, heat changes, temperature, cold weather, hot weather, they were just amazing little guns for the time. Now let's take a look inside and see, kind of get an idea of what makes this little thing tick. We'll set this over here, pull the mag tube out, make sure the chamber's clear. Now then, to remove the cocking handle, just pull this out. And then these two screws right here will come off. Now then we'll raise this receiver cover up. And there's the rifle. All nylon right here. Here's a recoil spring. Your bolt. Basically the feed ramp. And then there's your ejector, which is Put in over here on the side. Now the barrel is held in with this little loop right here. It is secured with this screw. It's a pretty innovative design for 1955. Now one trouble is with this gun right here, it's kind of a mousetrap inside, and if you're not familiar with the assembly, disassembly of this gun, whenever you, if you ever decide to work on it, it can be a little tricky, but once you've got it down pat, there's no problem. But it's just blows me away that 1955, that they were really doing this gun. Trigger guard was synthetic. I mean, super cool. Now then, we'll put this back together. So the receiver cover slips on like that right there. Screws go in. And down, charging handle go back in there, held in by a detent. And our magazine tube. It's in from the back. Remington produced this gun in several different models. There was this one right here, which was the Mohawk Brown. Then there was the Seneca Green, which looked almost like the Mohawk Brown, but you had to get it out into the light to really get the color of the green in there. there those are pretty fairly, fairly rare guns. Then there was later on the, the Apache Black. Now, there were different variations of the Nylon 66 as well. There was a Model 10C, which was a bolt-action gun, a Nylon 77, which was made for Kmart, and you see that they were a really green gun. That's not the Seneca Green. That was actually made for Kmart, and they were magazine-fed. 
Now then, there was also a lever action nylon, and I believe that was the Model 76, and that was probably the fastest working lever gun that was ever produced. Now, another interesting fact about the nylon 66s is from 1958 to around 1968, they were produced without serial numbers. And the reason being is because serial numbers weren't required until the Gun Control Act of 1968. So I guess that you could say this might be a ghost gun today. But still super cool, super fantastic guns. Great shooters, don't require much maintenance. You don't have to oil them. The, the synthetic polymer in there pretty much is self-lubricating. Uh, just clean it every now and then, and that's about it. But this is a super, super fine piece, and I love shooting it. Now, during the production run from 1958 to 1989, Remington produced a little over a million of these. I believe it was around a million and 50,000 of them. They were pretty popular. I mean, but Ruger's 1022 with this modular setup pretty much surpassed that. Whenever Remington decided to discontinue this gun, the dies were worn out. I mean, at the time, whenever Remington come up with this, this was said to have been the most expensive injection molding die produced in the world. But whenever Remington decided to ship production down on these, that die was literally worn out and sold to CBC in Brazil. And you might see some copies of the nylon out of Brazil, but those were pretty, pretty iffy little guns that didn't function well. But just super, super cool piece of history. And, and if you ever find one, they're not cheap anymore. There used to be a 50 to 100 bucks now they're four five hundred even up into the thousand dollar range if not more but if you find a good one for a good deal go ahead and get it because you'll be very satisfied with it now do you have a nylon 66 or any memories of shooting one or what's your favorite 22 be sure and drop us a line thanks for watching and be sure to tune in again whenever we bring another gun from the vault <laughs>